Yo, I've been using the new 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook the past few weeks, and these are the best settings and apps I've found to use it most productively. First things first is to mention all the essential settings that need to be enabled to keep the Mac as minimal as possible. Starting in appearance, I prefer dark mode always, so do take that on and go with the graphite accent to keep things clean. The Mac wallpapers this year aren't bad, but I've been using Allier's Space Collection recently. Now, going into the accessibility settings and then pointer control, I always enable three finger drag within the trackpad options. This makes dragging windows around much easier as you don't need to press down the trackpad first. I also enable tap to click within the settings as it just makes clicking simpler. When it comes to the dock, I'm really bad at keeping it organized, but with this new laptop, any app that I'm not using daily stays within the launchpad. Instead of there, the first page is my most used secondary apps, and everything else is put on the second page. Now, back to the dock, I keep it relatively small, and then ramp up the magnification, just because that effect looks so good. I also disable show recent apps, because you can very quickly clutter up your dock while jumping between programs. Whenever I'm exporting files that either I don't know what to do with, or I plan to delete them shortly, I just dump them straight onto the desktop. So I do hide all the items from appearing just to keep it looking tidy. This also helps a lot when taking pictures on the Mac. I've never been good at file organization, but what has helped is removing all the clutter within Finder and only keeping items in the sidebar that I'm constantly accessing. Documents, desktop, and downloads are all folders that I'm in daily, but then I also have my development and business folders for quick access. Then I just show whatever external drives I have connected, like my one for video files, and that's it. When making this video, one feature I found out about was sorting items by snap to grid. It was always annoying when you were in the icon view, but as soon as you drop in a new file, everything gets out of line. Now you can still move around the icon wherever you want the setting, but it'll snap to the organized grid to keep everything uniform. Once I'm configured all of my settings, I begin to download the essential apps like my calendar, Notion, and most importantly, Rectangle. What it does is give you the window snapping feature from Windows that really should just be in macOS to begin with. I just use it to snap to side by side. Cron is my calendar app of choice, mainly because it integrates with Google Calendar and is cross-platform, so it works on macOS, iOS, and Windows. The UI is also super clean, and it makes blocking out my days more enjoyable. I love the menu bar indicator for the app, which lets you know how much longer you have for your current event, or how long until your next one. I've been using 1Password for a little over a year, and it's worked really well. I highly recommend you don't use the same password for all of your logins, especially because it's really easy to store them here, as well as credit card information. My entire creator business lives inside of Notion. This is where I plan, script, create the shot list, and do everything else for my videos. It takes some time to get used to, but you're able to build your own custom productivity system with pages and the various type of databases the app gives you. Although sometimes Notion is a little overkill, so simply Apple Notes is an app I still get a lot of use out of. Mostly, when I get quick thoughts or ideas, I'll pull up my phone and jot them down here, where I'll later look at them on my Mac and transfer it into Notion in some way. I then also use reminders a ton, whether it's just for things like switching the laundry or daily reminders to myself about my business. I'm not a big fan of how Apple Mail looks, and for around two years now, I've been using Spark as my main mail client of choice. They've added a bunch of AI features and ways to sort email based on priority, but I honestly just prefer how it looks and sort by most recent. Now, I use Setup to get access to a few different paid Mac apps. Essentially, this is just a subscription software that bundles up hundreds of Mac apps for a single fee. They're not all amazing, but the ones I like most are CleanShot and Bartender. CleanShot just improves Mac screenshots, making it easier to drag out a custom-sized window, or my favorite favorite feature being when screenshotting a tab, it creates a drop shadow and overlays it on your wallpaper. Bartender then cleans up the menu bar, allowing you to collapse your less needed icons. For me, I keep these to a minimum anyways, but outside I show my calendar, do not disturb, and sound settings. You can customize the expand icon, and once pressing it, you'll see the remaining items in the menu bar. Now onto my browser of choice, I do use Chrome, mostly because of extensions and the developer tools. 1Password is a good one to have to replace the built-in Chrome password manager. Volume Master allows you to change the volume of tabs individually. Now, whenever I'm designing and looking for inspiration, CSS Peeper is super convenient, as it will tell you the font family, size, line spacing, padding, all of that sort of info about elements on a web page. In addition to it, I have the color pick eyedropper, which makes it easy to grab a specific hex code of a color I like. I tweet almost every day about behind the scenes of this YouTube channel, so Tweet Hunter is a really good one to have. It allows me to see some of the best performing tweets from creators I like, which gives me a lot of inspiration. Grammarly is also essential to make sure I don't have any typos or grammatical errors in my writing. For the developers watching, my code editor of choice for personal web dev projects is VS Code. I love it because there's a ton of extensions 
extensions that make programming much nicer, like code formatting with Prettier or auto renaming tags. When I am doing personal projects, it's mostly React, and so React.js code snippets is a really nice one to have. This is awesome because it allows you to quickly create a new component. You can also make VS Code look almost however you want with the amount of themes available. Most recently, I've been using this minimal theme from Nishabosh. Instead of the stock terminal app, I have iTerm2, mostly because it just looks better. You can adjust the transparency of the window and change the color. I honestly don't spend that much time within the command line, but iTerm has a ton of features that will make your life easier as a dev. Now, I edit all of these videos with DaVinci Resolve Studio. By far, Resolve has been my favorite editing software out of all the ones I've tried. I find the Resolve timeline very easy to work on, and the color correction tools are really powerful. I was on the free version for over a year, and you can do so much with it. I still do have the entire Adobe suite, but I use mostly Audition to record my audio, Lightroom to edit photos, and very occasionally Photoshop. Now, the last of the apps I use are for designing. The first is Figma, which while it is mainly an interface designing tool, I've used it for things like the benchmarks I have in videos, logos, personal branding, that sort of thing. In my opinion, it's super easy to use, and it's free. Because Figma is a web-based app, there's technically no benefit to this desktop version, but I just like having easier access to it. The same can be said for Framer, which I also just switched my WordPress site over to. I've been playing around with the editor the past few months and have really enjoyed it. WordPress is obviously much more powerful, but customizing this site has been a lot easier in my opinion. I would say that Framer is definitely more aimed at designers, as the interface is very similar to Figma, and you need to know how to play around with layouts and paddings to make a site look good. So, having used the M3 Pro 14-inch MacBook these last few weeks, all these apps have ran incredibly well and made my on-the-go workflow very nice. I do hope that by sharing the optimal settings and apps for my workflow, you found this helpful. As a little spoiler to my full review, while the power is nice, I'm actually not noticing much of an improvement compared to my M1 Pro. If you enjoyed, subscribe so you don't miss that video. Take care.